So guys, Nnamdi Dekalu, who has been in detention, you know, his son came out today and penned an emotional message to the United Kingdom, the UK government and the Nigerian government over his detained father being uh, Nnamdi Dekalu. I'm going to show you what happened and what he said. You know, I've often said it even before I show you what he said, that the Nigerian government led by Balami Etenibu should not throw the part of Muhammad Dubari. Look at the level of insecurity in the southeastern part of the country, that if you want to quench the insecurity there, you know what to do. Free this man. A lot of people have spoken. The courts have even spoken, said, release this particular man. A lot of political leaders and probably top actors in the country have spoken. Afinefiri, Afinefiri, Adibanjo has spoken. Uh, uh, Edwin Clark, Peter Biel, Atiku Abubaka have said, why not find a political solution and free this man so there will be internal peace in the country so that at least the southeastern part of the country will become more productive. Look at the seat at homes and a lot of things that are actually happening in that particular region. But Balam Etinibu seems as if he wants to follow the path of Mohamed Ebal, who believed that everything should be all about using military force. This is an ideological issue. People say we are marginalized. It's not for you to call a round table discussion and have a conversation with them. This is what Peter B said, that he's going to call all the agitators to come on a round table and they will discuss what is your grievance. And this is what a leader should have actually done. But Mohamed Dubari think he is in a military era that you send that military to come and fight people. Now look at how the problem has escalated. Well, let me show you what Namde Kalu's son recently sent. You know, it, it was his wife that actually disclosed this message. He said that Kano's wife, Mrs. Uchechi Okukano, you know, wife of the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Abin Namdekalu has again called on the United Kingdom government to intervene in securing the release of her husband, even as the IPOB leader's son penned an emotional message to him. They said Kano's wife, who made the statement in a post on her ex being with her account, said that the United Kingdom had always been the forebear of human rights and had a reputation for fairness, justice, and championing human rights. Kano's wife went for that. She said, she, she said however, she however said it has become so sad to notice that, that despite the however said that it has become so sad to notice that despite the fact that the UK played an important role in producing the Universal Declaration of Human Rights after the Second World War, recent governments have actively undermined the key legacy of their four years. She therefore called on the UK government to urgently intervene in her husband's case and accelerate his release from detention by the Nigerian government. Let me add. I've often said it here. I've often said it here that if for no reason that the federal government of Nigeria should release this man for peace in the southeastern part of the country, there are a lot of things. Look at, do you know how much billions that is being lost in the southeast because of what this particular issue, because of this particular issue, it's getting out of hand. Well, let's continue. She wrote, this is what uh, Namdekalu's uh, wife actually wrote on behalf of the son and every other person. She said, over the weekend after football games and other activities, our little ones' homework caught my attention. He was asked to extend a bit on a poem about the uniqueness of oneself. According to her, her son's last paragraph read, this is what Nambukalan's son's last paragraph read, which his wife uh, is, is trying to you know, let the world know. Her, her son's last paragraph read, no matter how much people think they know about our pain, nobody can feel the way I feel about the absence of my daddy in my life, nor the exact pain it is causing us. Look at what the son is actually saying, that no matter how much people think they know about our pain, that nobody can feel the way I feel about the absence of my daddy in my life, nor the exact pain it is causing us. Nor the exact pain is causing us. She said that the UK is the, okay. This is uh, she said that the UK is the phobia of human rights. The UK has always had a reputation for fairness, justice, and for being a champion of human rights. But let me the government release this man reach a political consensus or reach a political agreement with this particular matter that there will be a eternal peace in the southeastern region unless you people are happy with what is happening in the southeastern part of the country look at the number of people that have died because of this issue i took her back i said enough is enough it's high time people you know actually you, you people actually come together and find a political solution and end these rascalities and these issues of uh the, uh, the, the, the leader of the uh, of, of the uh, this group enough is enough look at what his son is actually writing Look at what the son is actually writing. An ideological problem cannot be fought. I've said it here with military. No, you can't use military to fight an ideological issue. You so the only thing the government needs to do as a matter of fact and as a matter of agency is to find a political way to solve this problem. You can't use military. You can't use this kind of approaches to solve this kind of issue. Honestly speaking with you, you see what the man said, uh, 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 the son said, that nobody can actually ascertain the amount of pain he, they feel about the absence of their father in their life. But I'm eating the book. Do the necessary, do the needful, so there will be an eternal peace in the southeastern part of the country. So th this, this whole quagmire and issue will end. Don't follow and don't tell the part of Muhammad Dubari. This is just an advice.
look at what is happening in the southeast well look, let, let us look at the comments of some people this person said chai this one said they should release and this one said if anybody tells me that any people will keep mnk mazinam the kano in the ss custody up to this moment i won't believe the marginalization of indi bankano being in the ss detention are the major concern of the Igbos at the moment President Tinibu should do something. People are saying, even people that are not from the South region are saying, but Tinibu should do something on this particular issue. He should do something on this particular issue. Well, that's that for that. On another developing story, you know, uh, today Rutumi Ameshi came out and he started attacking the youths and exposing Balame Tinibu's government. He was like, why are the youths so quiet, considering all the rascalities and the hardship in the country? You know, he has kept on saying that Nigerian youths are those side that we are busy arguing about soup, which soup is better than which soup, arguing about irrelevant things. When our country is dying, when our country is being crushed by these criminal politicians that are in power. I'm going to play the video so you can listen to what Rutini Amesi said, that we have those side youths that are not ready to do anything. Well, meanwhile, let me play the video so you can listen to him and see what he said for himself. Let me play the video so I won't come back We'll try to dissect and analyze more issues. And please, if this is your first time of coming here, like I've often said, do well to follow us here so you'll be getting important information and updates about political happenings and issues in the country. And also do well to click on the notification button so you get notified whenever we drop important videos. I'm angry with the citizens. Yeah, I've said it several times. You can't see a group of people stealing your money, impoverishing you. You can't buy fuel, you can't buy anything, nothing. And then you'll see, look at what happened in Nedu. Should any, should any politician be campaigning in Nedu? People should be angry. There should be protests, not even protests of, uh, uh, against anybody, it's against politicians. I will, will not vote. There will be an election in our state. That's what the people should be saying. Because the, the rate of hunger now, if people like us can't afford this, uh, you can imagine what's happening to my mother. And me. <laughs> okay, but we don't keep with my mother because I, I will defend my mother. Those who don't have children like us, name one politician that is in this space in Portaco that didn't pass through me. They can't stand hunger. Liberty has become the capital of betrayers. Name one, just name one. You will not see me any day in any political meeting planning for talks. You will not see me say, take money, this is for talks. I will not. You know why? My priest tells me that anybody who dies in the course of that money will be held accountable. The society may not hold you accountable, the society may not imprison you because you're a big man, but you should be in prison. But God, you will not go to heaven because God will hold you accountable. And I tell my priest every day, I don't want to miss heaven. If you listen attentively to what Rutima Amechi said, what he said is that he said, look at the election that, that, that he is angry with the citizens, that people should be angry, that there should be protests everywhere. We will not vote. There will be no election in our state because of the world, the current state of what hunger. He was talking about the, the election. That in an ideal situation, people shouldn't even have come out to vote when this kind of hunger and issues are actually happening in the country. He was complaining that even as a big man, that he can no longer afford fuel prices to even fuel his car and you know uh, uh, drive or power his vehicles and cause a problems to him. Him as a big man, or as a political leader in the country, talk more of an average Nigerian. How are these people going to survive in this kind of economy? He said, the Nigerian youth are not yet ready that we should be angry. As of today, yesterday I did a video where I told you guys how much fuel is, is being sold. As of today, fuel is being sold at the rate of 1314 in some areas. And on the official pump price of NMPC is around 1000 something. This was the same increment in fuel price that made Balami Tinibu and his cohorts to carry out the highest level of protests we had during Good Luck at Ebola Jonathan around 2013, the Ojota protests. Whereby this good luck, everybody in general increased fuel by I think to 65 naira then, and they started shouting and protesting against him. Now, to, fuel has increased times 100 or times 1000 of its price. When Bola Metinibu took over power, when Bola Metinibu took over power, the fuel price as of then was as of 100 and something naira today. The fuel price today, the fuel price is around about 1300. Is it more than times 1000 of the price that Bola Metinibu met this particular fuel price? So Rutima is saying that the youths are those side that even in the election shouldn't have held because the youths are suffering. You, you want to conduct the election when the people are hungry. And up, on top of that, you conducted a very flawed election where APC rigged themselves into power. And the youths are those side. We are busy arguing over irrelevant things and things that will not actually you know, help us or probably save our economy. So Rutima Amechi really said the truth here. You know, this is not the first time he has been calling out Nigerian youth to go out there and protest for their rights. Look at the price of everything has skyrocketed. 
and everything he said there is basically and not, nothing but the truth. We are so to those side. The youth are to those side in the country. That is why most of these politicians are taking us for a ride. That's why these politicians will loot money with all sorts of impunity. That's why the president can do decide to wake up one morning to buy a yacht, to buy a plane, without even informing the citizens that he wants to use their own taxpayers' money. Because what we are those side. That, that is the same way they will just come out and start lying that the protocol refinery will commence work on this month. They keep on posting, postponing it. They know that the Nigerian people cannot do anything because we are too docile. We are too docile. And they know that what is causing this docility is because of what? Our the division, the ethnic and the religious division amongst us. Because whenever the people want to come together to unite, they will make sure, make sure that they incite and sprinkle elements of what? Religious and ethnic sentiments so that the people cannot come together to protest with one voice. Look at what happened during the MBAT governor's protest. Many people said it was an evil agenda before the protest. Many people kept on, they tried to change the narrative so that they, they would make sure that that protest was actually divided. They said it was good to be an Atuka Abubakar's agenda that people want to destroy the country and all that. Meanwhile, these same people don't want to address the real issues, which is hunger and the rascality and the anti-people policies that they've been making that have plunged this country into economic hardship and suffering upon the people. So they know what they are doing. They know what they are doing and they don't want the youth to come together and to be united in tackling and probably fighting against this rascality of theirs. I love what Rotimi Amechi said. People are to those sides. That's why they find that it was uh, a pass and parcel of the previous government, being Balame, um, uh, Mohamed Buhari's government, that, that made, laid the foundation for this suffering. Balame Tribu is just cementing the suffering. Enough is enough. It's high time the youth you know, rose up to defend their country, or else this country will be taken away from us by this criminal police. country will be taken away from us by this criminal politician. Their children are outside the country enjoying good governance in some other areas. Meanwhile, they are looting our country. Well, another developing story. As you can see, they say that the repentant Boko Haram fighters escapes with government rifles and motorcycles. You know, well, there are some news you see and you keep on laughing about this, the, the whole thing about the government. You call them repentant Boko Haram. Repentant Boko Haram. In what country do you say that these people are repentant? These are terrorists and those that have actually caused a lot of havoc in the country. But you call them repentant and you, you reintegrate them. Look at what they did. That the repentant Boko Haram fighter escaped with, gun, with government rifles, guns and, you know, motorcycles and coal. Like I've said, if they, if Bola Maintenance government and this government want truly, and if the government truly wants to end insecurity, especially in the northern part of the country, they know what to do. They know, they know, they sincerely know what to do. Like I've said, most of these insecurities you see in the northern part of the country are being sponsored. That is why, remember, Matawale, Dawuda Alawa, being the current governor of Zafra State, came, came out and accused his predecessor, being um, Matawale, that he is part and parcel of the banditry. But when I came and said, ah, I'm not, too. I have, I, I can swear with the Quran and the Holy Quran and cool. To tell you that there is an iota of truth, if you watch the back and forth between these, those two governors, there, there is a back, there is some iota of truth in some of the things they are saying there, meaning it is sponsored by the politicians over there in the northern part of the country, not just in Zafra and in other areas. Imagine suffering your people just because you want to make money. Just because you want to make money, you want to hijack power, political power. You know, you know, rise up talks and banditry in the in your own state to destroy your state to keep people in your state just because you want power just imagine what these people did repentant Boko Haram in what area do you have repentant Boko Haram that should be facing persecution for what they did that should be facing persecution for what they did to humanity do you know how many lives are being lost in the northern part of the country innocent northerners and muslims have been innocent muslims and christians in the northern part of the country have been slaughtered on, on a daily basis by these people and after they will just surrender and tell you that they they are sorry you you, you call them repentant and you integrate them people that their hearts are hardened and now they've actually escaped with what government rifles and motorcycles it's a wake-up call to the government. It don't call people repentant, especially people that have been designated a terrorist group that we know that these people are truly terrorist groups. They must actually face persecution and actually you know, face the wrath of the law. Because when you keep on pampering insecurity and these particular issues, you are destroying your own place. And that is why the insecurity has kept on persisting. At some point, they said we are negotiating with these terrorists. With the negotiations to date, what has it done for the northern part of the country? Nothing other than what increasing the level of insecurity in, such, in, that, in those areas. Well, I'll keep you guys posted. Like I've said, do well to follow us on this particular page because we'll be bringing important information and gist and political situations and happenings in the country and news. And also do well to, to click on the notification bell. So you get notified immediately we we'll drop videos about the issues happening in the country. See you guys later. And thanks. And lastly, what do you think about this cry that Namdekali's son and his wife are making? That the federal government of Nigeria should release him and the United Kingdom should actually intervene in this case. 
to ensure that this particular money is being released because there is a lot of controversy actually surrounding this and do you think it will bring everlasting and permanent peace to the southeastern part of the country?